give it to me and I'll put it down. It's <laughs> gosh. Almost lost wow. I mean, you can't really come in any hotter than that. Uh, uh, no, no, that's we're it. Back. That, we're, that was man, it. That was hot. That was, that was the clacker. Was, and nobody yelled clacker this time because somebody got in trouble by yelling it in the past. At the we last were, SGA event, we got in trouble for yelling. Clacker? When, yeah, because our clacker person wouldn't be around when we needed him. And so Jim would scream clacker. Yeah, I would <laughs> yell it. Yeah, I mean, it I was scared a, it was people. were dropping moment. drinks. Anyway, that's not what we're here about. No, we're here. Today. We're here for a special guest. Hello. Very special, <laughs> Miss Amber Oding. Amber, Is it Oding? It, it's so I okay. Let's I'm get married in for the into this. We'll make this out. snappy. I married into this. My maiden name is Gentry. My Easy. husband Brett. It's Odding, like an otter. I know, oh, but Amber I. Otting, like an Otting, an A-O. Otting. It's German. Was Man, that German? Feel, no, that was a British That's, accent. But I did ask. Otting? You do ask. I, I called up. my husband Brett Oding for weeks Otting. when he was not my husband when we were dating. And finally, he's like, one day they announced my name and they said Brett Otting. And I was like, oh, what? it's Otting. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Brett. Um, sorry, Brett. We love you. My bad. So my let's, bad. let's start over. Let's I'm just kidding. No, we're, we're, we're into it. We're you probably deep. get that a lot. I do. Uh, okay. We're here live at the SGA day two, spring gas, and uh, we have one of the insiders. Yes, in here. How do yes. you feel like it's going so far? So I feel I have the opportunity to work with our committee, our planning committee that puts us together. Which this all particular things, one or this all things? Just this particular this, this particular baby. event, and this committee has it's two things that I love about it. We have return committee members and we always have new committee members that oh, nice. come in. That's good. And when we met initially, so Michelle, Michelle Weiss is our chair this year and she's with Southern Company Gas. When we came in the first year, the first thing we asked is we kind of did an assessment. What stays, what gets tweaked, what's in, what's out. what goes and what comes in that's new. And they were very open to just looking at different styles of content. So we have some new classes here. And then like you were talking about Gas 101. Yeah, that was yeah. very impressive. Gas 101 so cool. and Gas 201, they are their staples. Yeah. So it's definitely a learning conference that's put on by members, seeing what's happening on the front line and engineering. It's just, it's very, it's a hands-on too. They get that opportunity. So it's, it's very different from any other conference we do. We, we have some new folks here and I'm like, guys, these are courses that you would be paying for that yeah. we'll be paying for in a month from yeah. now. Go out there, get natural gas champions, get gas yes. 101, yes. 201, whatever your thing is. But um, yeah, lots of great content. Yeah. Good, good. I'm glad to hear that. And, and the knowledge sharing in those, uh, yes. that's what I heard too, is that the participation, it's not just one day, one way presentation, but the, the interaction the is interaction. really vibrant in that. So that's wonderful to hear. And that's when, for Southern Gas Association, our conferences shine the most in sessions that we call roundtables or facilitative roundtables. And as round soon tables. as we open that up to everyone, it's shared experiences. It's, yeah. This is what I'm seeing. This is a trend. This is a challenge. And it changes the dynamic of our registrants because they walk away with partners. I love those sessions that are the, uh, I have a friend with a pipeline <laughs> sessions. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know and a guy. Everybody, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, those are great. No, roundtables are where it's at. Amber, we're asking everybody while we're here because mm -hmm. we are big advocates this year jim and i are really focusing on creating more champions within our industry Love which it. i know y'all are very passionate about yes i've been through natural gas champions we've been championing that program yeah. as much as we can so i'm asking you we're asking you how can how can you be a better natural gas champion personally myself yes. personally yeah. yes and then any tips you got you have to think about any job you do when you find the job you love it gives you satisfaction and the difference i think even with public service and utilities and distribution and transportation all these things that are our industry are for the purpose of people who need it for a variety of reasons from manufacturing to the household and if you think about how one thing in your day as a natural gas champion makes such a big difference in people's lives and make it personal I think our customers need to understand, and it's true, Jim and James, they're in the industry, but they're also my neighbors. Yeah. We shop together. I've seen them in the store. Um, these are the people that play baseball with my kids on the weekend. Mm -hmm. And when you start 
interlacing why you do this and why you enjoy it and who you are in the community yeah. changes everything. And, and I've always said utility is a special place where it's family and I see it in the transmission side. I see it on EMP. It just everybody bonds in this industry. It's unbelievable. It's the best industry. That's a, that's okay. a spokesperson I, right there. I'm going to steal this story. We've got fans all around. Um, David Love taking pictures for us. Uh, he's on our marketing team. Yeah, David. Posting this morning. David Love in the house. Uh, forgot totally what I was going to say. I don't know either. Is this the email? Is this the connecting for oh, yeah, the? That's oh my exactly gosh! What it was. You all have right. to tell the story. So earlier in the week. Uh, sorry. Oh, is this the? Is oh, this oh, exactly? I have chills. Oh, oh, it. Lead it off. Since COVID, uh -huh. I lose things. Oh. Um, but yeah, earlier in the week, you sent out kind of an SOS to the uh, section committee. Yes. And uh, we kind of activated on it. And I just shot an email to Jim. I was actually in a meeting. Saw it come in and was like, there's no way I can serve this. Passed it to Jim. <laughs> and really, it was on the topic of cathodic protection, yeah. right? And I said it so no one else would have to. Thank and you. Um, CP, such a key as we like to say. Yeah, CP. And so I pointed it to Jim. I knew I knew the answer, but threw yep. it over the fence and was like, "See what you can do." And it what was happened? a nice lob. Oh, it was a very nice lob. So he gets it <laughs> popped up on the screen, and I'm like, "Oh wait, we have a need for uh, SGA uh, presenter. We need a presenter for cathodic protection." I'm like, "Okay." My wife, Tammy Bomia, clock spring on her right, 25 years with the company. Mm -hmm. I walked to the other side mm -hmm. of the house. I said, "Hey, SGA needs somebody to present." She's like, "When?" I said, "Tuesday." <laughs> And she's like, she's like it right in the middle of like dinner. Yeah, right. know, she's like, oh, no, she's, you know, she's, she's like, she just oh. like drops everything. <laughs> no, she was working at this. She's like, all right, hold on a second. So she sends an email to Ben Broussard, X Shell, and a cathodic protection guru. Mm -hmm. Ben's like, I can't do it, but let me talk to mm -hmm. Greg Alexander, who is out of Southern Company yeah. and also big in the NACE Eastern Area Conference. Absolutely. It goes to there. Then Greg can't do it, but he knows somebody. And within three and a half hours, I think we had a name to you. Well, I yeah, think you you didn't just have a name to me. I had my phone rang. Oh, my oh, phone oh, rang. Even my yeah. phone rang, and it was so funny because he picked up the phone. He goes, "Amber, you're in a little bit of a predicament, aren't you?" <laughs> I don't know who you are, but yes, are you watching me right now? <laughs> and you're like, "Yeah, really." And I, is this about the cathodic class? Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> but honestly, and it's a success story because really, that's the backbone of our industry is where it, people want to help oh others. Gosh. When there's yes, when absolutely. there's needs and uh, the competitive or the logos get checked at the door, as yeah. James no, says, 100%. and people just working for a common goal, and that was a beautiful example. Yeah. That, again, that's a success story. And I even it's offered huge. to you to do the presentation or the bio reading because yeah. I wanted to tell yes. that story. You yes, know yes. What? and have other people be brave like that. Yep. So I love it. Yeah. It's a fantastic right. story. Great yeah. tribute. Amber, we could talk all day. We could. We'll get to more guests. All right. Maybe next time. We've got to talk more. We'll, we'll come to the to the office till next time. Salute. Cheers, friends. Salute. Cheers. Salute. Cheers. Yeah, we'll be back. James, we're back. You know, uh, as I say, sometimes it just goes click, 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 click. And we were downstairs, and I was walking around, and I went by this booth mm. called eSource. Yep. eSource. And when I was there, I happened to notice boxes of girl scout cookies I'm talking my love language oh and i'm like how much how much are you selling those for them they're like we're not selling these we bought a whole bunch of these to support Jeez. the girl scouts and they're giving them out so you know i'm a marketing guy right there so, we go so this is genius and you're supporting a great cause on the back side boom you know? boom win so win it. that's a win win how are you, sir? I'm good. Welcome I'm good. to the show, Jesse. Thank Sometimes you. we forget we even have guests. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, tell us about the Girl Scout. I'm kidding. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I mean, it was uh, really. I'll give a shout out to our marketing uh, person, Jess Kerr, who it was oh, her nice. idea. And we missed a, uh, you know, quite frankly, one by one week uh, having a Girl Scout there with us, uh, passing oh, out the cookies. That, was, which, oh, that would have been. Then fun. I think we would have left with a suitcase of POs if we'd had that. I so. think you would have. <laughs> I think you would have. <laughs> Yeah. Please tell us, uh, introduce your last name just so everybody knows and your company and what your what your specialties are in the industry. Yeah, yeah, happy to. And thank you guys for, for having me on, Jim and James. So um, I uh, I'm lead our, Jesse Woods, I lead our strategic account group at eSource. And uh, we are a research advisory, data science, and solution services uh, firm and, and really specialize in, in a couple of different areas. The group that I'm here with um, is our data science team. And what we've done over the past several years is really help utilities build decision support systems. Okay. And so, well, cool. 
that's everything from a electric utility, how you should prioritize your vegetation management, to with a natural gas utility, helping to forecast and predict the number of leak discoveries you're going to have in a given year. Oh. And so it, it's been exciting to see just the wealth of data that's available and the opportunity that utilities have to leverage that. Uh, I really think, you know, we're, we're at the beginning of a, of a renaissance of, of sort of data and the utilization of data in the utility industry, and it's an exciting yes. time to, to be there with it. I, I, I Sure. I would almost venture guess that I could walk away and you two guys could talk about AI and yeah. that whole world probably like for like probably eight hours. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, that sounds that's like for it's another at, show. Another we'll, show. We'll save but that. Yep, yep. I, I am excited at where we're going as an industry, and it seems yeah. like when we came out of the pandemic, we had a lot of folks really synergized on bringing even more tech, bringing you know, utilizing this data we've had. Um, you know, whether it's AI or, or machine learning, machine vision, you know, yeah. whatever. I'm seeing so many things. Uh, it's great to see companies coming into that space. Uh, first SGA event, or have you been here many times? Yeah, this is our first. Um, so uh, a gentleman who uh, worked with us uh, retired from uh, a key client, and he's been helping us sort of uh, get some introductions in the gas industry, right. Mark Knox. I'll give him a, okay. a shout-out. And uh, Mark's a great guy, Heard of him. A, lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of experience. And so we're, we're excited to, to really, you know, one of the things we joke about is eSource is one of the best-kept secrets in the utility industry, and our goal is to stop keeping that secret. So yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like for it. Long, no for long love it do we give mark a big enough plug or oh, oh. Well, no. he's smiling at us <laughs> yeah, i think he he's fine it's yeah. a good sign it's a good. good sign before we eat these cookies we are asking everybody yes. while we're here especially at sga one of their key things is creating natural gas champions right so we're asking everybody how can you be a natural gas champion what can you do to be a better natural gas champion yeah, I think, you know, really our view at eSource is, is twofold. One, we want to help the natural gas industry continue to grow in its sustainability focus. How can they be a sustainable industry in the future? And number two, it's really, you know, from a data science perspective, how can they take data and information that they have and use it to make better decisions? You know, it's not just data-driven decisions, but it's really data-informed decisions. You know, we're here with some of the best experts in the industry, and we want to help just unlock value from their data so they can make those better day-to-day -day decisions. Man, I like that. For Thank you, my sure. friend. Absolutely. Really fantastic. appreciate you guys appreciate having you coming us. On. Hey, we'll be right back. Come okay. save the day. Wow. We might have a natural gas emergency. training emergency. Oh. Training. Oh, yeah. We Not an emergency, a training we'll emergency. But Craig Carter is in the house for a quick stop by because he is our long-term friend. Long-term. Long <laughs> it has been a while. It has been a, quite the term. Craig, have you been on before? No, nope, never have been on the podcast Jim before. Jim has never invited you. I told him so many times. I don't know. go grab I, you, and he never did. I keep saying that he's always busy. It's, it's never happened. <laughs> <laughs> so, Not that I wasn't busy. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Man. I'm, I'm always busy. You're, tell you're us always a, busy. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Craig. Well, I'm from Alabama, yeah. a longtime Auburn fan. Uh, grew up around the Talladega racetrack. So when I was very young, before I had a license to drive legally, I actually drove around the track in a race car at Love 14. It. Love it. That's a cool Those story. Those are the yeah. stories that we're here for. When I think of Talladega Nights, I will forever now think of Craig Carter with mm -hmm. Magnolia River. That's correct. We, I don't know if we mentioned that at the beginning. What does Magnolia River do? We're an engineering firm. We do uh, engineering design on pipelines, meter stations, regulator stations, uh, anything to do with underground pipelines. And then GIS. we also do GIS. We do uh, provide inspectors for construction jobs on pipelines. So a little bit of everything. Okay. Well, How's your marketing department? The, our marketing so department sorry. is uh, awesome. I the best I've ever seen. Awesome. But it could be you know, well, the, the people that we bring in that are new. Wow. What the, what what kind of plug is that? I, I will say that I went by the booth. Oh, the new booth. Sharp. It does I look fantastic. I took a lot of B roll. Summer, I'll send it to you. I'm not kidding. It does look good. For uh, sure. It looks. I uh -huh. love that. It, it, it yeah. actually is. I couldn't believe how well it turned out. So, yeah. Yeah. look at thing. the tan that he's getting just being at the booth. Just. Uh, we're, you'll see pictures on LinkedIn, I'm sure, yeah. as I'm well as other up. platforms. Craig, we know you have to go. There yep. is a training emergency, but we're asking everybody, what makes you a natural gas champion? What's your passion? What's your purpose? 
Well, I think my purpose is, as, as trying to be a natural gas champion, is to understand, you know, the importance of natural gas and how, you know, there's another story that's being told that natural gas is not good. Right. But there is a bigger, you know, story that natural gas is good. Right. And it's for the benefit of the people, and, and we need to tr provide that energy source to them in a safe manner. Amen. Man, we've heard safe, safe, safe. I love it. Craig, go All right. take hey, care of these folks it. and Thank Gas 101. We will see y'all later. We'll All see right. you on the floor. Hey, we'll be back. <laughs> Jimmy, we're back. We are. Man, this one's been a long time coming. Bruce, we talked about this. You know, we I think we spoke it into fruition. Existence? Recently. Yeah. Like we were talking, what was it, on LinkedIn the other day, and I was like, man, surely we'll cross paths this year. And look at that. I Just was like that. I was hoping that I would catch up with you two uh, at one of the conferences that we we're at. So this is great. What a great opportunity. Oh, great opportunity for us. Yeah. Well, yeah. for everybody, I guess. Have a Hopefully. Great, great voice, Bruce. It's fantastic for podcasting, yeah. radio, whatever you want to call it. I'm yes. a little under the weather right now. You can probably tell that, but uh, it is. It's something I'm working at working on. So let's just keep it going. I love it. I love it. Well, Bruce, we are here at live at SGA. It's day two, Spring Gas, and we're bringing the podcast live. We're going to have keynotes here, the closing keynote right here behind us tomorrow. Sessions um, here, 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 here. Bruce, for those that don't know you, can you just give a quick intro who you're here with? Sure, you bet. You know, I'm Bruce Buxton, and I'm the Graybeard. That's the way I introduce myself. It's online. coffee with the gray beards there, today. That's what we decided. Go. And I established already that um, I am the grayest beard of all. So mm -hmm. I, I still do rank, outrank these guys for age. How about that? Just, just barely. So I, I also have a LinkedIn Live that I do uh, semi-weekly. It was more, more regular uh, a couple months ago. But I just ran across a, a lot of things that needed to be done. Oh, so you know how that works. Yeah. Um, but it's still in the works. This, this Thursday at 3 p.m., I've got a show that we're going to be talking about enterprise field mobility for GIS. Mm. So uh, if you if you want to talk about that or hear about that, that's a good thing to to, to come to. Is this on your LinkedIn page, or do you have a separate one that you do this from? I do this on my LinkedIn page. Okay, this is from Bruce Buxton's LinkedIn page. So okay. you can you can just navigate there and find the live stream and and so your goal. So we put this episode out. You're going to go in the comments and point, and then everybody can connect with you. That's how we'll make it work. Absolutely. That'd be right. perfect. Deal. Perfect. Solid. That okay. So first SGA, or have you been here before? No, this is my first SGA, and actually I'm coming here because I wanted to see if there's some sort of value for the company I work for, which is Locana, and we're a GIS consultancy from out of uh, Colorado and Seattle. Um, but I just wanted to, I wanted to kind of see the lay of the land and see if there's some value for us being here exhibiting or attending this conference. And what has been, can you give us your takeaway so far? But if it's good, share that. If it's not good, <laughs> let's, let's table that for a little bit. No, but I, I, I do want to say the conferences generally are, have been a bit underwhelming um, in the past 10 years, say. Like it has, for me, it has nothing to do with COVID. Um, it has to do with just, uh, we have other ways of communicating, clearly. We have a lot more digital ways of communicating. And I think people don't show up at conferences like they used to. So whereas sure. 10 years ago I could walk away with a stack of business cards that I could actually do something with, uh, at a conference like this, uh, you know, I might have two or three people I can follow up with. And, you know, it's just hard as a vendor to have uh, spend that kind of money for that kind of access. Understood. But Understood. I do love coming here. I love the atmosphere yeah. of being at a conference. I like the people I meet. I'm, I'm primarily a people person. Yeah. I love people, love yep. to be around people. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. Well, this show, Bruce, so I'm excited to hear your answer, too, because, um, well, you have a passion for all of this as well. We're asking people at this event, because of uh, SGA and their work towards natural gas cha champions, putting installing more natural gas champions, what's something that you can do to be a better natural gas champion? Well, me personally... Um you know, I thought about that ever since you got you and I ran into each other earlier and said, this is what we're talking about at this conference. I, I thought, okay, what could I do personally? Yeah. And, I, I, you know, I do have an awful lot of opportunities when I tell people what I do for a living. And I, the GIS company I work for, we support utilities mainly and mainly gas utilities, actually. Sure. And the work we do with GIS really supports how that operation, those operations are um, safe and uh, and 
uh, efficient and you know provide great services for the people and so I get to see a lot of infrastructure and it's just staggering how much infrastructure is in the ground right oh, now. Oh, it's amazing, it's, isn't it? It's uh, unbelievable how awesome. much is out there, and even stuff that, even the stuff that's kind of getting older is still there's just so much infrastructure in the ground. And as it is a clean and reliable source, it seems like a no-brainer to me that unless there's something else coming up that I don't know about, mm-hmm. like you know, you know, maybe they're saying gas stoves hurt people, but that just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, it just, don't it, it, don't it, say that too it, loud. People no, but it, start coming out of the session. But it's crazy. You know, I listen down, to stuff yeah. like that. I, I, I just, it doesn't make any sense to me. And at any rate, um, with as much infrastructure as we have, it's safe and reliable. And with um, the supply we have in the U.S., it makes no sense to switch horses midstream. And then the other thing I was thinking about too is that I think that a lot of people, as they think about the switch from gas to electricity in some way safer uh, operating their vehicles from gasoline to electricity. I don't think they clearly understand the role that natural gas plays in keeping that EV going. Right? I mean, most generation in the United States is natural gas generation. Wait, a lot of people think it just comes from the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah, it does. Right? You plug it in and it it comes in. I just plug my car in. But natural gas plays a huge, huge role in the electricity that we consume in the U.S. I mean, uh, that's if that that one thing alone is is worth everything because if we if we're going to electricity overall then we're sticking with natural gas but then how do we build the car if we don't use natural gas and fossil fuels absolutely absolutely you know, i mean so it's a, it's there's so much to educate on so much to understand and we've gotten this far let's just say in the last 150 years 140 years of natural gas let's just say it's going to take us I would say like a two to three hundred year plan as to what that is, and I bet some of the things we don't even know yet. I think over the time, like in seventy five years, some other technology will come around or, or such. So we really have to look at the not just changing things in seven years or ten years because that's really almost a, a blink of an eye, and I don't think that that's really prudent to be quite honest. And I, anyway. oh, it's not logical. I mean, it's yeah. just. It's not logical that you would have this much investment in a source of, of energy for, you know, for a growing economy like we have yeah. to think we're going to, you know, wholesale change it yeah. in the blink of an eye. I yeah, mean, there's, Ten years there's, is a heartbeat. Yeah, you know? yeah. And, and I, I just I think there's, there's a lot of life for natural gas. There's just an awful lot of life for natural Love gas. It. Love it. Well, Bruce. Soon enough, maybe we can join you. Huh? Yeah, maybe absolutely. We need to do a gray coffee with Graybeard's uh, mashup of some kind. Yeah, that'd be Let's fun. Actually, actually, that. we'll do that. Um, I, I hopefully, maybe I don't know. We could do it online, I suppose. But if we can get get together in a conference sometime yep. and do it again, you and just to have AGA a plan. This year? I'm not doing AGA this right. year, well, but, but I might maybe choose you need to. to. I might choose and to be our guest. Okay, let's think right, about let's that. Let's talk about it. All hey, right. thanks for having me, you guys. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, cheers. All right, we'll be back. Good morning, Jimmy. James, what day, day is this? Day, what day is this? Day three? Wednesday. Is it Wednesday? It is Wednesday, my it's friend. It's the final day. The closing keynote is forthcoming. Only Which is a f- fortnight away. Just kidding. It sounded forth- I think there's Who a says new- forthcoming anymore? Uh, you do. Dr. I, Matt and I, Joyner. And I, oh, the Dr. Matt. James, it has been a whirlwind of a conference it really has definitely feels uh uh uh, excitement in the air and uh, with 800 participants here there's never a dull moment you know that first night when suzanne told us 800 Mm -hmm. um i was like whatever you know we all we all upsell and exaggerate a little bit but having seen two or three days of it now I think what we saw was there's a lot of local folks, which we confirmed, right? We had a ton of people from the Carolinas. To uh, be expected. And greater area. But, um, you know, they're only able to come out for a day and get the training they need, and they got to go back to work, is the honest truth. So I think we saw it in bunches. Yeah. Uh, There weren't 800 people here at one time, but that's not a bad thing. Um, But, yeah, man, lots of good stuff. Um, We've talked to a lot of people about the sessions. Uh, we've got, again, people sitting in Natural Gas Champions right now as we speak. Yep. Gas 101. Gas 201. 201, I think, was yesterday. And, and, and you know, we talked about this, though. I, I looked at the agenda, and I didn't have eight hours to, to participate in that, but I did pop in for a little bit. 
and they really go in depth into the one on one for people that want a really good comprehensive overview of the uh, mm -hmm. the industry of far as far as how natural gas works and the delivery. And I mentioned to you line packing. You know, no, if, if people don't know the term line packing, they need to go to Gas One Hundred One because it's. Uh, I learned about it. We, we, yeah. You know what? And that's again what we call that knowledge sharing. Yeah. So and talking, I like how they did it. Um, and like I said, I, we weren't in it because we were out here doing this, but uh, talking with David Love and some of the folks at Magnolia, yeah, there were different folks that came in for like 30 minutes at a time. It was almost like a little mini conference where you got little sessions within yeah. the session and I uh, heard great feedback on that. So a lot of good training going on. You know, we're a fan yeah. of that. Uh, so kudos SGA, kudos. Uh, the show's been great. Yeah. Lots of traffic, a lot of folks coming over inquisitive about it. I've got a ton of connections this week. Uh, my views are way up. Um, oh! I, well, you, being out here, man, there's no equivalent to it. Yeah. We can talk online, we can talk in a box, but uh, nothing like being out here shaking hands and kissing babies. No, there is nothing like it, too. And I had the opportunity yesterday to talk to a newer person that has joined our industry and more on the business development side. And I was talking to him and you know, I was coming in on how great of a conference it is. And he was like, yeah, yeah, I, I met a lot of people and such and got some cards, but I haven't sold anything yet. And I'm like, I said, mm -hmm. I, I, I challenge you to change your mindset that when you come to these conferences, don't think about selling, think about establishing relationships, establishing that connection, and then taking that and then following up, let the next two to three weeks after the conference be full of everything that you've captured here. Because if you're so concentrated on doing a sale here, it's probably not going to happen because you have to also think that the participants here are here for training, education, yeah. and also meeting folks. And they want to see new technologies. They want to see, you know, the new widgets and the gadgets and the new solutions and all those things. And then they take it back and they're decompressing. So, again, perfect storm. You hit them up in a week or two weeks and, you know, follow up, which is a key to it. Don't let it end here. This is just a springboard for it. So... That was a, a good chat I had yesterday. I enjoyed doing that. Yeah, a lot of new people. Um, we had a lot of new people on the show yesterday. Met uh, folks, marketing folks. Met a lot of marketing folks this week. I, I geek you out did. when I meet marketing folks. Yeah. Uh, but uh, be, being able to go back after the show, it's not just, like you said, it's not just about sales. Going back, being able to talk shop with other marketers, going back and uh, connecting for future events, um, you know, that we're going to partner up with people on or, you know, whatever it might be. It's not just going back and saying, OK, who can I spam? It's going back and figuring out, you know, who you can help out, who you can connect, what what drives them building a relationship. Absolutely. And, and people love to be educated or, you know, as I say, knowledge share. So when you continue that, your value is seen in the industry and people look at you as a, a resource, a subject matter expert into it. So, I mean, I guess after decades at, at this, I realize that it's all that inner web and the more value you bring to yourself in the industry, the more value you bring back to the industry. And, what, and that's what people like. It's great to be known as a resource. I mean, and then talk about Energy World, that, you know, I had two people said, hey, I need to ask you really mm -hmm. about OQs. Yeah. And I'm like, let's go. Let's talk sure, about it. You sure. know? Absolutely. So. so we got a full day today. I'm flying out late tonight and try to get home and salvage spring break a bit. Oh, with the kids on spring kids break are this on week? Spring break, so I'm you gotta get home. Super dad. Uh not there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I mean I'm not there. No, but, you're not. But I will be. Yeah. Uh, I'll be home tonight. But um yeah, full day today. The key closing keynote supposed to be big. We're we're recording a full episode with uh, Adam Murray today from WeldFit. Um, in fact, I'm probably here pretty quick, uh, so that'll be fun. What else, Jimmy? Yeah, I I think we said enough for right now. Get ready. Yeah, it's gonna be like this all year. Oh, it is, brother. And day three is coming at you right now. I will be back.
The inaugural kickoff, every day the first guest of the day, James, always gives me a little bit of oomph in my I, step. I get nervous. Do you? So does, so does uh, we haven't met Derek yet, so I don't know who he is because he's our first <laughs> guest. Oh, wait, I let that cat out of the bag. Yep, yep. Old friend of ours, Derek. Derek, please introduce yourself. My name is Derek Dickens. I'm with Z-Rust Oil and Gas, and we specialize in corrod corrosion mitigation through chemicals. Mm. What does that mean? So we attack the ca issue of casings and tank bottoms that are corroding out due to various reasons. Um, so our chemical basically is applied soil side uh, on a tank bottom or in a pipe casing, it's applied through the vents or in pipe preservation. We can do it through misting pigs or various ways. So we also get in involved with hydrostatic testing of water and pipes. That, that makes sense. sense. That yeah, made yeah. sense to me oh, yeah. in my world. Yeah, the first time it didn't make sense to me, but when you explained it, I yeah, got, it oh, came nice. along nice. Have you ever been to an SGA event, my friend? Yes. <laughs> it's on the card. It's a question we have to ask. Yeah. Uh, we were told. Uh, how many? Just throw a number. Uh, this is my second or third event. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so the first like one that. since COVID, though. So, oh, really? Yeah. So where did we go pre-COVID? Where would we have been? Oh, you, you were talking eons ago. Yeah, that was a long Yeah, it's like, a, a, uh, well, you know, BCAD, you know? Where I mean, were it's, we? like, <laughs> it's just oh, nice to be back out it. amongst amongst our you know family and friends that are here because that's what the group really is. It's a it's it's a very small but august group, tight knit group of family that we all know each other. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We were talking about this this morning on our opening. We did a kind of a welcome to day three and we're talking about the relationships and the and, and the goal of having strengthening and making those relationships here and then carrying it forward it doesn't end when the conference ends tonight at whatever it ends yeah. six o'clock or whatever it continues yeah. on and, and those yes. are the conversations that happen so easily but at this point i, I have a riveting question James. san antonio is that where it was? We were in oh. San Antonio oh, yeah, yeah, before yeah. pandemic. Was that where it was? Yep. Yep. The Hill Country. Ooh, there you That's go. Take that, COVID. <laughs> That's COVID it. brain. I Mind remember like it. a steel mm. trap. <laughs> Man, that was the best moment. Let's go. I go remember ahead. that now. Yeah, I, I remember we, we were at that. Uh, it was JW, a J -JW. Yeah, JW. Yeah, the big one. The, yeah. the, uh, the big uh, Lazy River. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. The huge parking lot. I remember the parking lot. I remember our booth. Okay. Right. Anyway, I feel better about myself. More was, importantly, uh, what were you going to say? I, can't, I have you no had a idea. You had a burning question. Oh, the oh, question. The question. You know, a, a topic here is, and it's going on right behind us, natural gas champions and the making of natural gas champions. And what do you consider yourself as far as your best attributes of being a natural gas champion? Um, really trying to be more selfless. And, and be more involved with the group because there is no perfect fix for anything. There's no reason to be biased, but you have to be an ambassador mm -hmm. and putting, putting your best foot forward, getting involved in the community. Um, that's one of the things I'm really proud of, whether it be the gas association or midstream associations or any of them, is they really get involved with the community and give back yeah. because it, the community does so much for us, and we get a lot of negative press as an industry. Um, or I should say biased press. Yeah. Well, maybe not negative, but biased. biased. That's a that's a good term. Um, and so it's important for us to be those ambassadors. So um, all the all the charities we we do, you know charity events we do, golf tournaments, clay shoots. It sounds like we're having fun, but we're giving back. Yeah. Yeah. You know we're we're giving scholarships to kids to become engineers and and technicians and to get involved and get their hands dirty and understand how this world works. As, as my best friend says all the time, give it all away, yeah. right? Give it all away. Yeah. You know, you don't think about how truly being a natural gas champion is really creating more opportunities for more folks, right? Yeah. Whether it's our clients, whether it's by proxy, the money we inject into communities or bringing the next person into the industry, right? Yeah. All those are different ways that, that we can do it. I love it. Yeah. yeah. Hey. As always. Thank you. you brother. Thanks, brother. Good to see you all. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. We'll, hey, be, we'll back. be back. All right. Jimbo Jim. James James. You know what time it is. Well, we got three more days of conference left, so we're halfway through it. Just kidding. 
you know it's better than that it is the final day right behind us right now we just snuck out it was the keynote closing keynote packed house uh yeah, it was cool talking about kind of what the same thing we were just talking about absolutely what, yeah yeah uh for the last two three days which is being better champions of natural gas and getting getting out there getting uncomfortable and having those conversations so i mean how topical yeah it was really good and the the advice was a lot of the things that we were hearing you know it starts at home starts in your community starts in your neighborhood it's personal uh, very much so. Your own story is a great story to tell. Social media was brought up. I mean, a whole bunch of items, too. And then attracting also uh, folks into our industry, talking yep. about the trades, talking, talking about people about actually coming from other industries wanting to join energy and the, and the good things that uh, we have to provide. So it was energetic, I would say. Oh, I see what you did there. You know, um, we talked about it a lot here, but seeing it in action and seeing more people kind of rally around that same fact it just validates that we have a lot of awesome people on on the job on the case um we just need to activate and get out there yeah. so really cool great conference uh kudos to the sga kicking off the year strong i mean i know they did oklahoma city but i yeah, think yeah. spring gas is really the big event that kicks it off um Fun to be out here with the show again. I'm tired. I'm, oh, yeah, I'm we are. I'm running on fumes. I'm ready to go home. I got a late flight. Um, but it wore me out this week. I'm uh, not yeah. in conference shape yet. Well, we, we, you know, when people think of conferences, they think of just whatever. But honestly, they began generally uh, 6.30 in the morning, 6.45. And then I would say if we made it uh, back away by 9, it was an early night, you know, right? Barely. So yes. you're, you're looking at... Uh, you're looking at 14-hour days, and but those are great days, though. I mean, look how many people we saw. We must so have saw. Folks. We must have talked to <coughs> collectively 400, hundreds, 500. Hundreds of people, yeah. Yeah. So I heard 800 in total. Um, you know, distributed out over the days, of course. Um, a lot of people have to work, head back out, so they're only here for a day or two. But um, you know, overall, good start to the year. Ready to be back on the road. Do this again and again and again. Yep, yep. With you, my friend. Absolutely, brother. Good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Share the show. We hope this was great. Hope you got a chance to sneak a peek of what all has went on at uh, SGA Spring Gas. Hey, we'll be at the next event. Just waiting for you. See you soon. Cheers. Stay safe.